Hi there, welcome guys to another tutorial, a creative tutorial. Today we'll be looking at the freehand path tool icon. So what is this? Well, we have here a little exercise. This is an exercise that I gave my students, so I'll be going through this. And uh, let's take a look at this tool, how to use the freehand path tool. With the freehand path tool, you can draw a path or shape. Press the left mouse button and hold until the shape is complete. The shape will then be filled with the selected color or pattern and outlined with a brush, if so chosen. While drawing, a preview line is shown that can be modified in pattern, width, and color. Note, this tool is best used with a vector layer for editing purposes. Okay, so, that gives us a rough idea how this freehand path tool works. So what is this exercise asking me for? Let's read here. Drawing exercise. Draw the organic shapes using the freehand path tool. So let me just highlight where I'm reading so that everyone is clear. So I'm reading here. So I'll start again. Drawing exercise. Draw the organic shapes using the freehand path tool. Use a brush size under five pixels, which is similar to what I've just mentioned here. So we're using a brush size 3.1. All right. Um, fill in the shapes using a color scheme of four different colors of your choice. So I already have my four colors that I'll be using. Actually, this is my finished one. And I've used calamansi, that color. I've used jungle green. I've used chlorophyll green and I've used bright chartreuse. I've also used avocado and I've used green yellow. So these are the colors one, two, three, four, five, six, six colors that I use to create this pattern. So I'll be reproducing this right now in Krita. So minimize that. This is what Krita looks like when you start Krita. So that's a new file. Again, I always change this from pixels to inches. And this width is 11 inches. The height is 8.5 inches. So then I hit create. All right, so this is my sheet here. So what did I do over here? I have changed my default size because I find this is very small to 22. I'll keep it on 22 so that when I highlight icons over here, you guys viewing will be able to see. And this is what it looks like here. Freehand path tool is right here. I will just go on it. And what's the first thing we need to do? Um, <clears throat> also, I have adjusted my layers and I have changed my thumb size to very large so that when I hover over, the layers, you guys can see what's inside the layer easily. All right, so what am I going to do? I need to bring in this image. How am I going to bring this in? Easy. Let's go to that. We come here to this tool, Reference Images tool. Click there. Come over here to the Tool Options, Add Reference Image. Click that button. And this is the image I'm be using, an abstract shape image. And that's it. And then I just open this to about here. Yeah. And I send the probably I like place that in the middle. I think that looks good. And I carry down my opacity. All these options I'm finding in the tool options. So this is where I carry down the opacity to something like uh, 30, 30%. I think that's pretty good. I can see, I can work with that. Now, that's set there. So what's the next step now? The next step is to create a vector layer. So I'm going to come here, press my down arrow, and go on vector layer. So now I'm on vector layer, all right? And I am now going to look for the brush that I used in the last exercise. And it's called basic five size, yep. And I remembered that size was a 3.13. So how do I, so I'm, this is something that a lot of people struggle with. 
you actually activated the brush that you want, but you can't get the size. Why is that? Because although I activate the brush, the tool over here that I'm on is a select shapes tool. I need to go on to my freehand path tool, then activate my brush, and now I can change my size. So I'm going to change my size to 3.13. Yeah. You can just type it in on the top right here. So you just when you once you hover over here, type start typing 3.13 and it would adjust itself. Now, lastly, I need a color. So I'm going to right click in here. I can right click in here and play with the color wheel. Or I can go to advanced colors and I can select my color from here. I'm going to probably use the advanced colors. Huh? Uh, okay, I think I got a nice color. Not my pain, my freehand path tool. I'll check. And the brush size 3.13. Now I'm ready to start drawing. All right, how do I start drawing? Easy. First, you zoom in to an area that you want to start. And I'm going to start it here with this shape that looks like a heart. And I just start going around. That's a shape there. Now, I can come back and I can edit this shape. So I'm going to Control Z so I can draw it again properly. I'm going to. Let me see, do I have any tool options that I want to use to help enhance? No, nothing here. So let's continue. It's probably best to zoom in as close as possible while drawing these individually. The idea here is not to try and get it drawn perfect. I'll show you why. All right, so that's finished. That's fairly cool. All right. Now, if I want to edit this shape, this is the tool that I go to edit shapes tool. Click there. Then click on the shape and I get a bunch of uh, points appearing. What I can do now is I can grab this, this curve and pull it back in. And I can shape this around to my heart desire. You see that? I can grab the red antenna here. I can pull it. Uh, push it. I can do lots of interesting things to modify this curve, right? So, just showing you some of the features of this tool. So, what when would you pull onto the antenna if you want to influence the curve? You can pull this out to influence the curve or push it in also to influence the curve, right? So some people wondering, why not just push here? You can also use that. So they have, this program is giving you many options to get in what you want. Anyway, I think we've gotten the drift here of how the editing tool works. Uh, Now, I'm going to leave it there and let's move on because I got others to draw, all right? Actually, you know, I'm going to delete this and try it again. I think I can get it drawn better this time around. So let's try. Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. Let's move on. So which one do I go to? I go to this one here. And one thing to always remember or always check, please make sure that you're on your vector layer while drawing these so that you can edit these in the future. All right. So that's another one.
not much fun just sitting down here joining these over and over. But if you guys are at home watching now, I would suggest probably some rent some background music. This is going to take a while. Uh, I'm not going to worry to edit each one of these shapes. I just showed you guys how to edit a shape and I, I leave it there up to you. <laughs> Let's just leave it there. You guys can edit your own shapes and, and try to bring these as close as possible to the reference image here. And I see a lot of students struggling to zoom in. Um, whenever they want to zoom, they go over here and press the zoom button. I'm just pressing my middle mouse button, wheeling the mouse in and wheeling it out to zoom in and zoom out. Simple, without moving off of the tool that I'm using. I think that, that is something that I needed to mention. Well, drawing here, I'm actually pressing my Alt and my Shift button to see if they have any extra features that I can explain to you guys. Any um, Shift options, all options or Control options. And I don't think so. This tool is pretty straightforward. You just use it to draw freehand shapes. You know, it doesn't have any hidden features. So again, I'm putting all these shapes onto my vector layer. First thing, getting all these shapes there. I'll adjust this corner here or this closure. Uh, probably that's a blessing in disguise what happened there. I'll be able to show you that, how to adjust that. If you follow this tutorial, right up to the end. All right. So we're making some progress, making some progress, getting these organic shapes onto the screen. So we're, so we're about to get some over here now. Oops. Whenever I make a mistake, I always press Control Z. Uh, goes back to my previous state rather than erasing the mistake. Uh, So we're making progress, we're making progress. Huh? We got about five more to do. And I 
think I got, I can see it well. Yeah, there's someone here at the top that I didn't even remember. Alright. Alright, this could take a little while. I'm moving quickly, so. Four. Six, 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 six. I think I got the most of them. I'll just put in this one here on the left side. Yep. I think you got the more, so I'll just do a quick save here. Um, I'll just now, uh, I'll just freehand. Full presentation, demonstration. All right, cool. That's that. That's all save. Right, I got all my shapes on, and then what I'll do is I'll just go back to the to the image and I'll turn down the opacity so you guys can see. So this is what it looks like once it's all scribbled in, drawn in, or sketched in. And then I'm going to put the opacity back up to 30, right? So that I can continue working. Just wanted to show you guys at home the progress so far. Now, there's some shapes that need editing. And let me address this right now before we go any further. So like this particular one here. I just need to bring this. I'm going to grab one of the actual handles or one of the points and pull it right to here. And that's that. I'm it for this one. That has gone too far. Or what I can do is this little segment. No, I'll just do this. This is easier. Push that out. Take a little gentle shape. There. I broke the segment. I pulled it there. And crank that there. I pull that handle. And yeah. Yep. That's that. You can go around and uh, just change these, you know, edit them by using this tool. I'm not going to spend too much time editing these. I'm going to move on to the next stage. All right. But I just wanted to show you guys how you can actually clean up your shapes that you've drawn. If I see anything that, that really needs editing, like this one, just pull that there and pull that down. That in there, and yeah, that's just a bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think this is a bit too sharp. Out of the curvature here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just I suggest this. And I think that should be it. Good. I can live with that now. Now, now that we have all done. Now, what's the next stage? The next stage is to insert our colors. But do you know the colors you're going to be using? 
Yeah, I know the colors because I have them down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create one, two, three, four, four squares on this side and put my sample colors in there so that it's easy for me to select the colors that I want. Okay, so the first color is, what's the first color? Calamansi. Uh huh. Let us now create a square. So I'm going to come on a new layer. Uh, for this one, yeah. That's a new layer. Now I'm going to create these colors here. So the first thing is I create a square mm -hmm. that has a color already in it. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy. So I'm going to right click onto this vector, copy, and then paste. And that allows me, and then I'm going to line this up here. I hold down my shift and move this. This allows me to move this in a straight line. So I think here would be a good place for the second one. Then I'm going to do the same thing again, paste. Then I'm going to grab this, line it up here, and then bring it down. What am I doing that? That is so that I make sure everything is aligned. So, and all the shapes are the same size. So I won't fold these. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna copy this now. Paste it and then bring it down here. So that's how I've made sure to, to get that in. Get those shapes in there. Now I'm going to change the colors on the shape. So I'm going to go to this first one and then I'm going to go over to my tool options, go to the, the bucket fill and click there. And I am looking for. Calamansi, right here, got it, found it, perfect. What I can do too, is I can put the text there, but I'll do that after. All right, now I'll probably do it now, let's do it now. That's the color, I'm gonna put it in black. Probably put it in a size 10. Not a size 8 because there are others and they might be smaller. And the consistency, I'll keep them all at size 8. So that's the color there, Calamansi. What's the second color I use? Jungle green. So I can come down here and let's look for. Jungle green. Yeah. And put that text box there. I'll call it Jungle Green. Oh dear. I should have put it in black. Whoa. whoa. Okay, good. What's the next one? Let's have a look here. Next one is chlorophyll green. That's the next color I'm going to be using. So you can come down here and let's search for that. Chlorophyll green, right there waiting for me. All right, now grab my text box. PH, uh-huh. L O R O P H Y L L chlorophyll green in black. Always remember that. Save close. Now I'm going to break this and put it like that, so it's on two lines. Cool, great. And then what's this one down here now? This one, what does it say? Bright chartreuse. Yeah. Uh, 
let's let's look for this now. Okay, it's right here. Bright chartreuse. So let's look at how to spell this last part of the word. C H A R T R E U S E. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Let's click there. Great. Right. I'll put them in, put in B R I G H T C H A R T R C H A R T R E U S E. All right. Save and then close. All right. That's one, two, three, four, four. There are two more colors that we're going to be using. We're going to be using avocado and we're going to be using green, yellow. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do? I'm going to grab this and I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to say copy. And I am going to say paste. And I paste that directly over there. Wow. And let's change this now. This color, this goes to avocado. Bar screen. Now let's go, let's do green, yellow first. But that's also a color that needs to go in. So seeing our phone, I'll just put that in green, yellow. Green, yellow. All right, just want to move around this text so uh, that let's copy. I probably want to put that wrong here. So, if you want to locate a position where you want the basic. This is very important. I'm going to bring my cursor over there. After you have copied it, you bring your cursor and you press Control Alt V, and that places it into a location that you want it. All right, and thought that's very useful. So this is avocado. Avocado. I'll see. It's a color, by the way. Um, let's look for it here. Ah, found it. Good. So I got about all my colors that I use. Let's update this by saving. And what's the last thing that we're going to do? Well, I need to create a, a background, a background that I'm going to be putting my layers in. Sorry, a background that I'm going to put my avocado in. So I'm going to go here, vector layer, and I am going to create a background for like this. So I know that there is going to be all, that is going to be my avocado layer, all right? Let's make sure that it's on avocado. Yep, it's on avocado. It's good to go. And uh, then what am I going to do with the rest? So let's put that at the back. Right? Or let's bring, uh, let's put this at the back underneath. So I'm going to put this under. Just bring this down there. Yeah. So I can turn this off for the time being. And now what's the next thing I'm going to do? I'm going to select the ones that I want to, well, I'm going to select a couple and then change them at a time by changing the colors. So I can select that. And if I want to select another one, I hold shift. And uh, let's select all the light color ones that are close to the color, massy color. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select that, that, that one, that one, and that one. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change those colors. Ah, you see how all those change immediately? 
I'm going to change those to the Calamasi here. All right, just like that. So I didn't get all. So I'm going to put this one. And to select multiple things, you always press on whole shift while going over selection. That's the secret there. So I'm going to put these now into, into Calamasi. All right. So what's the next color that we're going to be looking at? We're going to be looking at jungle green. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Right now, this point here is best to be as random as possible. So as you can create a very organic pattern. Um, so those are my jungle green. Uh, I don't. Mm, I don't really like them. Mm, no, I think what's keeping back is yeah, yeah. Let's do this this way. So now we can grab one, and not just grabbing things random. One, two. Three, four, five. All right, cool. Jungle green. Yep. That's jungle green. Probably could get another one over here. One. Probably two there. And probably three there. Put those in the same jungle green. Cool. So jungle green is done. Let's go to chlorophyll green now. So grab a few. Holding down shift. One, two, three, four, five. No, not that green. Let's go chlorophyll green. Yeah, different green. All right. So let's go to another set now. Now we're looking for bright chartreuse. Okay, so now we got that in. We now need, I think one more color needs to go in, and that here is the yellow green. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five. And that will be that will be yellow green, huh? Change that one there. All right, so there are a few left over. So where, where am I going to put these? I'm going to scatter these. So this few, these few that left over, I'm going to put this in Kalamasi. This one in Kalamasi or Kalamansi. Better proper pronunciation. No, I don't like that in there. Sorry. I'll put that in there, but I don't like these two next to each other, so just swatch. Switch this for a jungle green. I don't like that there. So switch that for it. That one is a jungle green. Put that down in there. Jungle green. Jungle green. Um, let's see, what can this one here be? Da, 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 chlorophyll. All right, so I think that we got all of our patterns, we got all of our colors, and things looking good. 
things looking good now we need to turn on look i'm going to go over now the the very last layer which is my avocado and i'm turning that on now this is the background the background is the avocado layer all right and that's it basically but before i go what did i do let me just look back at this now well i had a piece of orange strip onto the right i guess i can put that back so let's get on to here let me come here create my orange strip Ooh. wait a minute okay good and that's the orange i chose there that's pretty good I left it white on the other side, but I guess I can put orange there too. I'm guessing I know I can put orange there too. Yeah, so it pops out. Everything pops out now. It's a nice little pop. And that there would be it. And that there is a finish, that there is a finished project. Yeah. There's certain elements to this that I need to right here. I need to bring this in so it doesn't look like it's on the other side. Right, and that everything fits in there. All right, cool. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial, where what I've done is created. So let's recap. I've used the freehand path icon, well, the freehand path tool, to create organic shapes. And I have also used the fill tool to color these shapes. I've used the text tool to create my side notes so you can see the colors used. And then I place a background on everything so that the shapes will stand out. And I mainly use natural earth tone colors, the colors that I use, calamansi, jungle green, chlorophyll green, bright, chartreuse, green yellow and avocado all right i hope that everyone was able to understand this presentation how to use the freehand path tool try it try it and when you train it please always remember use it best on a vector layer and if you draw a shape and you don't like it once you're on a vector layer you can edit the shape using the edit shapes tool all right take care please like share and subscribe to the channel and have a good day. I'm out. So this brings us to the end of another demonstration, guys. Please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel.